SwiftUI was the start of a new generation of frameworks designed for Swift. But the benefits of a Swift native framework don't stop with your UI code. Core Data has long provided tools for data management, but its design was born of the era of Objective-C, and it doesn't take full advantage of everything that Swift has to offer. Many of you have been asking for a Swift native solution to data management, designed with first-class support for all of Swift's features. Let me introduce you to Swift Data. Swift Data is a framework for data modeling and management. It's built on top of Core Data's proven persistence layer, but with an API completely redesigned and reimagined for Swift. Like Swift UI, it focuses entirely on code with no external file formats. Instead, it uses Swift's new macro system to offer a streamlined API. If you were defining a model in Swift, you might write code like this using regular Swift types. To manage this with core data, you'd then need to redefine the same model using the model editor built into Xcode. But with Swift data, you just annotate your class with the at model macro. This single line of code packs a lot of functionality, like automatically enabling persistence, iCloud synchronization, undo and redo, and more. You can then refine these automatic behaviors by annotating properties with additional attributes, like indicating the value must be unique across all instances. And Swift Data uses the Codable protocol to understand structs and enums, so you can model your data with the tools that you already know. These types are fully modeled in the underlying data store, enabling you to perform fast and efficient queries even on complex structured data. And of course, it's simple to integrate Swift Data with Swift UI. Now, we started to build our demo app using the new observable macro to drive Swift UI view updates. So my interface updates as I see new birds, but my edits aren't saved across runs. By importing Swift data, I'll be able to add support for persistence really easily. I'll just replace the two observable macros on my existing classes with Swift data's model macro, and my model's ready. At the root of my app, I'll add a modifier to set up the Swift data container. And when I create a new backyard, I'll insert it into the model context so that it gets persisted. And finally, I'll hook up my backyard list view to the persisted data. That's really easy to do with the new at query property wrapper. Because we're now loading saved data, I can remove the default sample data that I used when I was prototyping. Before we test it out, let's also update a widget that I've been working on. I'll just set up the container and query the same way. With the app's shared container enabled, Swift Data automatically makes my data directly accessible by the widget using the same API. Backyards are now persisted by Swift Data and delivered to the view by at query. Before we started, I filled the database with some initial data, so you can already see some bird visitors. And if I add a new backyard object, when I return to the list, it will appear with no additional work. And Swift Data provides more than just persistence, including things like support for undo and redo, which just works automatically. And as you can see, my widget is already showing the backyard that we just created. And that's a look at how easy it is to save and restore data using Swift Data. SwiftUI and Swift Data work hand-in-hand -hand to help you build engaging and powerful apps. 